a lot of times I am asked, have you reviewed a speaker that you thought sounded great, but measured bad? And so far, that hasn't happened until now. And the Dyn Audio, which one is this? Heritage Special is the speaker I'm talking about today. It's interesting to note that the Dyn Audio Special 40 that I reviewed about a month ago was similar in that regard of didn't measure great, but I still enjoyed it. But that Special 40 actually measured better. And there were some specific things that I heard that I could point to in the measurements and identify and say, okay, you know, that makes sense why maybe I didn't care for that or that makes sense why I like this speaker. But with this particular speaker, seeing the measurements and noting what I heard is a good tale of how certain aspects of a speaker's performance can completely outweigh other detriments. So let's talk about that. This set of speakers was loaned to me by a viewer. I would shout out his name, but I don't know if he wants me to, but he knows who he is. Thank you very much. He also gave me permission to open the speaker up. And that's what I'm going to show you is me kind of just walking through the speaker and pointing some things out. Now, the retail price for this speaker was $7,000 per pair. It is in a limited run of 2,500, and I believe they're probably all sold out by now. I did find an open boxed one for about $5,000 per pair. The tweeter is T330D. 330 makes me kind of think, is it 33 millimeters maybe? But my guess is it's probably closer to a standard one inch dome tweeter, 25, 28, something like that. But it's pretty dang stout. I mean, this tweeter ain't playing around y'all for real. This is legit. Now moving on to the midwoofer, this is a 18 centimeter midwoofer, roughly six and a half inches. And again, just another great showing by Don Audio. And note how wide the voice coil is on this thing. I mean, uh, again, not specified anywhere, at least that I saw, but I'd guess probably a three, three and a half, maybe even four inch diameter voice coil. It's a large voice coil. That's something that Dyn Audio is known for is having large voice coils and being able to take a lot of power. And that's what I liked about this speaker is, man, this thing could get stupid loud. Stupid loud for a bookshelf speaker. I was sitting at about three and a half meters away. I got this thing up to, on average, 100 decibels. That's not peak, that's average listening to music. There was no mechanical noise that I could hear. No port chuffing, no woofers bottoming out, nothing of that sort that would ruin my enjoyment of just pegging on this speaker. And actually, I pegged on it for quite a while. There's a song by Kanye West called Black Skinhead. Title may be controversial, but if you ever want to listen to a track that will be a woofer workout, listen to that track. While I was listening to that track, the bass is just, just doing its thing, going crazy, and the woofers are just moving. I got up and checked them out, sat back down and was listening. And the vocals were just as clear as they are if I'm listening to this at 80 decibels at that distance. I want to point out that I don't listen to music that loud for extended periods of time, but it is part of my testing and my review procedure to see how loud can I push this speaker and how does that compare to my distortion measurements and my compression measurements. And so we'll talk about that in a little bit. The other thing that I liked about the speaker was the bass. The bass was very, very robust. And again, as you increase the volume, it didn't seem to give up any. And at low volumes, it was quite nice. Now, I can't say that it has an extreme dynamic range like a high sensitivity speaker might have, something like the JBL 4367 that I tested a while back. That speaker has a ton of dynamic range. Or the KEF Reference One Meta, that speaker also has a ton of dynamic range on the low end especially. Now this speaker, at lower volumes, I didn't feel like it could quite give the strong, strong kick drum and capture the full dynamic range of some of the tracks that I was listening to that have 
more dynamic range to them, such as Dire Straits' first, or Brothers in Arms, not their first album, but their Brothers in Arms album. That one's known for having high dynamic range, and I think I just fumbled that word, dynamic range. A lot of other tracks to listen to have high dynamic range, and it kind of seemed like, yeah, maybe not quite as much dynamic range, but they could get freaking loud without breaking a sweat. That's impressive. And that's what drew me to the speaker. In my listening, there were a couple things that I found missing. One was it sounded like the upper mid-range was, quote, soft. And I'm I'm using that word, and we'll talk about that in the data. And then the higher frequency, there was some sibilance in the treble, particularly around the 4 to 6 kilohertz region, because what I noticed is it wasn't strong on every track. And I listened to a lot of different tracks because I want to see where those problems exist. If a tweeter is just too high a level, then it'll exist in every track. I'll hear that sibilance from four to eight kilohertz on every track. But with this particular speaker, this particular tweeter, it was more selective of the tracks that it popped up on. So my guess was that it was around four to six kilohertz. We'll also talk about that when we get to the data as well. The sound stage on the speaker was really, really big. And I really, really like that. It wasn't too wide to where it was distracting, and it certainly was not narrow. I loved that. One con about the speaker is it does seem really temperamental to placement, aiming. When it's aimed directly on axis, pointing directly at you, the treble seems a little bit too much. But if I turn it off axis 30 degrees and put it parallel with the wall behind it, it's too subdued. Now I wound up landing on about 20 degrees off axis with the speakers about two and a half feet off the rear wall in ported mode, but it also comes with some bungs that you can seal the port up with. And I'm sorry, y'all, every time I say the word bung, I wanna laugh, I can't help. My mind immediately goes to Beavis and Butthead. Bung, what are you? Sorry. So with that said, those are the things that I noticed immediately about the speaker in my listening and then coming back to the speaker and listening again, those really just seem to be the consistencies with it. This is one of those bookshelf speakers that, dare I say, you might not need a subwoofer with it, but that's a dicey one because there's a lot of music that I listen to, especially rap music, that has content below 40 hertz. And these speakers, while they weren't getting really significant output below 40 hertz, they did a decent job. So for some people, I would say that you might not need a subwoofer with this particular speaker. Odds are though, if you're watching this review, this is just for entertainment purposes and you probably aren't shopping the speaker because they're not really sold new in box anymore. You have to buy them used. Like I said, limited run of 2,500 pair. Let's take a look at the data and we'll talk about some of the things that I see in the data and some of my concerns, some of the areas that I think maybe conflict even with what I heard or what I would have expected to have heard. All of my data is captured using the Clipple Near Field Scanner. It is a great device that allows you to get anechoic measurements in a non-anechoic room. Starting off, we're gonna look at the impedance. Uh, we dip down into about 5.1 ohm in the ported mode. Keep in mind, I've measured a few different things and I'll try to call those out. So this is the ported mode. Now I've highlighted this area around here, which is about 450 Hertz. There's a blip, there's some sort of resonance. Not sure what it is just yet. Well, let's go ahead and look at the sealed mode. Now this is just the impedance and not the phase in sealed mode. And the reason I'm overlaying these two here is because I wanna show you that the port itself isn't causing the resonance. The resonance still exists in that 450 Hertz area as judged by the sealed mode in dash blue, matching up with the ported mode in this red color. So they're the same, they overlap. In other words, the port isn't causing the resonance. The resonance is in the enclosure or in the woofer somewhere. This is the on-axis frequency response of the ported mode, and you can see that it's mostly plus or minus 3 dB, except for this four to four and a half kilohertz peaking right here. And that's a strong peak, you guys. That's a very strong peak, and I believe that's the issue that I was having in my listening sessions. Another couple things I wanna point out, there's, there's dip right around this 1.2, 1.3, five kilohertz, somewhere in that region. Now, if you watched my special 40 review, You'll probably recall that I said that this was a compliance issue between the surround and the cone edge. And I think that this is the same thing that we're seeing here. Now, if we look at the general trend line, we're about 84.6 decibels. We'll just say 85 decibels at 2.83 volts, one meter. Sensitivity, 
F3 at 52, F10 at 38 hertz. So that means that the speaker will get down into about the 40 hertz region in a room, depending on placement, without a lot of issues. But below that, it's probably gonna be a different ball game altogether. And that's why I go back to saying you might wanna sub if you listen to music that has content below 40, maybe even 50 hertz. We do have a dip in the mid range there. I can't say that that stood out to me quite as much as it does in other speakers, but my hunch is that because I was focused more on this particular area. I said that it sounded quote soft in the upper mid range. This is it. There was a lack of clear definition in some tracks and it just sounded like, you know, when, a, when an instrument should have been dynamic and snapped at me, it just snapped, but then a little bit like kind of backed off a little bit. And I thought, Hmm, that's interesting. So I was mainly focused in my listening sessions on this ballpark right here and not so much this apparent resonance or this dip in the mid range. We'll look at the directivity index real fast and we can see that there is a directivity mismatch somewhere in this two to three to four kilohertz region. Now is that from the horizontal? Let's look. Two to three to four, eh, it's not too bad. I mean, there is a little bit of a mismatch. More than likely though, what we're gonna see is that it's gonna be the vertical response directivity mismatch. This is the on-axis response versus 30 degrees off-axis response. We can see at 30 degrees, the treble drops a good bit, but you also get rid of this peaking going on around the four kilohertz region. Otherwise, the responses are similar enough. This is why I said I landed on 20 degrees off-axis because in my listening, 30 degrees was too far off-axis, but on-axis was just too bright in that four kilohertz area. Now, if I look at the on-axis response of ported versus sealed, we can see that the seal does what we expect. It rolls off a little bit sooner, carries a little bit lower, below about 30 hertz, but not a whole lot. So if you wanted to put this right close to a wall, sealed mode would be the way to go. The other reason I did this though is because I wanted to point out by sealing up the port, you still have these resonances up in this particular area. And then if I jump down to some near field measurements where I take the microphone and I put it right on top of the drivers, when I measured at the port, there's strong resonance leaking apparently from the port because we know this isn't the port itself. I've already identified those resonances stay the same when you seal the port. So this must be enclosure resonances leaking out from the port. Now getting back to the anechoic data and looking at the estimated in-room response, this is what we have at zero degrees and 30 degrees for ported mode. And then what I've done is I've drawn the trend line. Now keep in mind that this trend line is a little bit closer to flat. It's not flat, but it's a little bit closer to flat than some other speakers might be. The reason for that is because the horizontal radiation of the speaker is more broad than other speakers that I've measured recently. Some of those speakers are closer to 50 to 60 degrees radiation, whereas this one is closer to about 70 degrees. So it makes this slope instead of bombing down, it's a little bit more flat. And I put the slope around the ballpark of what I heard in room, and, and this is subjective, okay? And it's important for me to note that. But I really wanted to key in on this area right here where it sounded like a little bit thin and also around the two kilohertz area as well. But then there's some peaking going on in the lower treble region, upper mid range region as well. That's what I heard in my listening. Horizontal radiation about plus or minus 70 degrees until you get to the point where the tweeter is beaming. Now, I wanna point out these red areas here, this 510 hertz, 600 hertz area, that's the resonance from the enclosure or the woofer or something, but that's a resonance. Now, this is the normalized contour plot, and I'm showing this simply because I wanna show you what happens when we switch to sealed mode. Here we go. See a difference? Not really, particularly that five to 600 area, and we're looking in this area right here. So keep your eye right in this area. Boom, 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 boom. Pretty much the same thing. That again indicates, it's just more evidence that it's an enclosure-based resonance. Vertically, what can you do? Can you sit above or below the tweeter? Because that's the reference point for this measurement set and my listening. Uh, you can go below the tweeter a couple degrees. You can go above the tweeter 10, maybe even 15 degrees. But realistically, you need to stay at that tweeter line because if you don't, you're gonna get a strong suck out at around two, three, two and a half kilohertz or so. And if you go above the tweeter line, then it's gonna be a strong suck out at around 3.2 kilohertz. Just stay at the tweeter level. Harmonic distortion at 86 decibels at one meter, 96. Okay, now we got some problems. The harmonic distortion of the woofer is starting to increase, but notice it's all second order and look 
how much separation you have between second order and third order. You've got about 15 decibels of separation. But I would say, generally speaking, the distortion, even though it's higher on the lower end, being that it's so well standing out from the third order distortion, that's my technical term, probably not even going to notice it. And I think that's why I didn't have a problem with the speaker playing at loud volumes. Multitone distortion, however, shows a different story and it shows it being relatively high. My personal line is for 3%. And, and I've, I've got a whole video on that. Click the card up above if you want to check that out. So when I see it go above 3%, that raises flags to me. And I think, man, that's not great. It's not good. It's not great. But I'd be lying if I said that I heard this right away. I didn't. Why? Maybe because I was keying in on other things. Maybe because the output on the lower end was still keeping up so well and there was no mechanical noises that I was just jamming and any distortion that was there, my brain filtered that out, possibly. I don't know the answer. And really all I can do in my reviews is just try to be as honest as I possibly can. If I lie about something like this, you guys will catch me eventually. I'll say something stupid and you guys will catch me. So I might as well tell the truth. If you use the subwoofer and cross this over at 80 Hertz or thereabouts, you do decrease the mid-range distortion quite a bit. And I, I find that kind of interesting as well. Now, we still have that 1.2 kilohertz distortion that's the same distortion that I saw when there was a compliance issue. Compression measurements. Okay. Everything looks good at reasonable output levels until you get to crazy output levels and then you do have compression. And I shouldn't say crazy output levels so much as this is all reference to 76 decibels. If you go from 76 decibels and you want 10 decibels of a dynamic range, that would be 86 here in red. Everything looks pretty good into about 55 Hertz or so. There's something going on there and that's increasing in distortion. If you wanna go 20 decibels of dynamic range, similar story, I would say, and then 102 decibels, so that's 26 decibels of dynamic range. Now you've got some compression issues in this 150 Hertz region. How much of this did I hear? I think that when I was listening at the lower volumes, some of the kick drums, Things like that didn't sound quite as dynamic with higher dynamic range music than I would have expected or wanted them to. How much of that is psychoacoustic? I don't know, but at least you have some data to do some comparisons with. And that is it for this review. I appreciate you all watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I wanna thank again the gentleman who sent this, this speaker pair out to me for a loan. That was risky and he said I could open it up and that was also risky as well. I wanna go back and touch on the fact that when I saw the speaker and I knew the price was $7,000 per pair, I thought, why did they not flush mount the tweeter? Because it's not fully flush mounted. And or the woofer, because it's definitely not flush mounted. The woofer is just surface mounted. Maybe that's part of the heritage I did. I'm actually, I'm certain that it is. But I can't help but wonder how much of that also has affected some of the linearity and some of the things that I heard the bass, the output level of the speaker is awesome. I really enjoyed my time with it. I personally would like to drop that four kilohertz, five kilohertz region down because it's just too much. It's, it's kind of aggravating. But otherwise, I think I would probably leave the speaker alone because it fits the rest of my needs. I enjoy my time with it. That's really all I can say. And I hope you all got something out of this review. I'll talk to you all later. Take care. Peace.